Let me show you how we can improve this image in Lightroom by using color contrast. As always, you can follow along this tutorial by downloading the raw files from the link in the description of this video. And now let's begin. So here we have a classic autumn scene with super dark grim clouds in the back and a very bright landscape in the foreground which got hit by the sunlight. We want to take advantage of the cold colors in the back and the warmer color tones in the foliage of the foreground. So how do we do that? First, we are working with a contrast rich scene. That means the first step for me is to merge an HDR image. So select all the five images down below in the film strip, right click on one of them, go to photo merge and choose HDR. Here, just make sure auto align is selected and with that out of the way, let's hit merge. And we will end up with this image. So before we can start focusing on the colors, we first need to get the basic adjustments out of the way. So let's expand the basic panel. Exposure wise, this actually looks pretty good looking at histogram. Still, there are a few things I want to change. And I'm going to start this by changing the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape. This will give the image more saturation. And that's exactly what I want for this vibrant autumn scene. I am going to bring down the exposure. And what this does is it will make everything darker, obviously, but this helps recovering details in those very bright areas in the landscape. Plus, it will also make the sky look more dramatic. So bringing down the exposure like this is already super helpful. I'm also going to bring down the highlights all the way just to recover even more details in the bright parts of the landscape in the foreground. Then to further work on these areas, I'm going to bring up the shadows. So we have some nice details in here. Let's raise them quite a bit. I think right around here looks good. And I'm also going to raise the blacks very, very gently. All right. Of course, due to these adjustments, we did lose a lot of contrast, but it's important to set up the base image first before introducing contrast in a way that's looking good. So with those basic adjustments, what I mostly do is to just create a more flat image and later on focus on specific areas to add back contrast. What I want to do now is to add back some whites. This will already give us back a little bit of contrast. And as I push the whites, I'm paying close attention to this histogram. Right now, there seems to be a bit of overexposure. When I hold down the Alt key and click on the whites slider, you can see where the overexposure is kicking in and it's right in this area. So I might want to tone it down just a little bit, but this seems good to me. So these basic raw adjustments have helped us get a more better looking exposure. And at this point, we can already start working on that color contrast. Right now, we do have a very yellowish foreground and we do even have some yellow tones in the sky. And by adjusting the white balance, we can fix that. So what I want to do, because getting the white balance right for an image like this with lots of blue and yellow tones is kind of hard. So I'm going to bring up the vibrance all the way and I'm also going to bring up the saturation all the way. This makes the image look super weird, but at the same time we can see where those warmer yellow tones appear in the sky. So with the saturation set up like this, I'm going to adjust the temperature slider, bringing it down and thus introducing more blue tones to this image. And I'm looking for a point where we have a nice balance between the blues of the sky and the yellows of the foreground. So I might want to drop the temperature a little lower. Right here looks perfect. And with the white blend set up, I'm going to bring back down the vibrance and saturation. Wonderful, that's looking much, much better. Now let's go through the present step. I will be adding some texture. I'm also going to add clarity and I'm going to add dehaze. I'm increasing these three sliders because I want this image to look very, very sharp and clean. So that's helping a lot. As I said earlier in the intro, I want this image to be saturated. So I'm going to bring up the vibrance a bit like this. Okay, that's it for the basic adjustments. Let's compare the image to before. And right away, the white balance looks so much better. The whole image has a much better exposure as well. We have lots more details in those very bright areas but also the sky looks much more dramatic. 
from this point on we can focus on a few areas very specifically and of course we are doing this with masking so let's go ahead open up the masking panel and first off i want to work on the sky so let's create a new sky mask with this sky mask we can further improve color contrast by making the sky even colder this mask is looking pretty good so we don't need to further modify it what i'm going to do now is to bring down the temperature only a tiny bit we don't want to overdo it we really need to be careful just a little bit like this already helps improving that color contrast let me deactivate the mask i hope you can see the difference on youtube but this is really helping a lot. On the other hand, we can also target the landscape in the foreground. So I'm going to create another sky selection, but since we don't want to target the sky, we of course need to invert that mask. And we only want to affect those green yellowish tones of the trees. So I'm going to click on those three dots, choose intersect mask with and choose radial gradient. And I'm going to create a radial gradient right around those warmer tones of the trees like this. And now instead of bringing down the temperature, we are going to increase the temperature. Again, only a very small amount, not overdo it. If we want, we could push the saturation somewhere in this particular area, but that's really about it. And by doing this, we have improved the color contrast as we further separated the sky from the foreground with these adjustments. Of course, we can do a lot more things for this image by making certain areas darker or brighter. And again, this will also influence the color contrast. So let me use a linear gradient and I want to cover the top part of the sky like this because I want the sky to be much more dramatic and grim. So I'm going to drop the exposure a little bit here. I'm also going to bring up the contrast and some clarity looks good in here as well so let's bring it up wonderful i will be stacking multiple linear gradients on top of each other each with different sizes so let's continue creating another linear gradient this time overlapping the left side a little more and again i'm going to bring down the exposure just like that and let me also introduce some more clarity right here and I think I want to add one more linear gradient for the very top like this and bring down the exposure some more. And maybe let's also raise the contrast. All right, that's looking good because we are adding contrast, particularly in this area, this will also affect the saturation in a weird way, making the colors more vibrant. So I want to bring down the saturation just for this linear gradient a little bit like this to bring the colors more in line with the rest of the sky what i want to do next is i also want to change the foreground a little bit because this bright area right here is not that interesting so let me create a linear gradient i'm going i'm trying to find the shadows edge right here in the foreground and kind of extend it more towards the left side so what i'm doing with this linear gradient is i'm going to bring down the exposure and thus we are improving that shadow of the foreground i'm again using another linear gradient on top of this one this time I'm making it slightly smaller and again bring down the exposure for a more dramatic effect all right this is looking really really good i love it that's the image after the masking adjustments and let me turn off the masks so you can see the difference from before to after looks so much better of course we can also affect the color contrast with a bit of color grading so for the next step let's head into the color mixer i want to start with the hue right here i do want to bring down the yellow hue just a notch and this will just give the foliage some more stronger autumn color tones so i want to be really careful here to not overdo it but i think this is looking really really good I also want to bring down the green hue just a little bit. But again, we need to be super careful adjusting this slider. Next, let's also adjust the saturation. So what I want to do to give this image more punch and 
further work on the color contrast is to make these brighter parts of the landscape that got hit by the sunlight more saturated. In other words, we are going to target the color of the foliage of the trees and make these colors more vibrant. So I'm going to bring up yellow and I'm going to bring up green as well. This looks great. Now we could bring down orange because this will mostly affect that field right here in the foreground and that's not that interesting to us. So by bringing down the orange tones, we can guide the focus more towards the center of the image. Let me bring it down a little more, just like this. And now what you can see as well is the sky is kind of overwhelming with those very well saturated blue tones. So we can also change these up a bit by bringing down the blue saturation a notch. This is looking much, much better. Okay. And of course, the luminance settings in the color mixer are also a great help if you want to work with color contrast. So let's check this out. Using the luminance sliders, we can make the foreground brighter and the sky darker. So let's start with the sky. I'm going to bring down the blue luminance and in turn this will make the blue parts of the sky darker. Again, we don't want to overdo it, so let's be very careful here. And on the other hand, I want to make the yellow tones just a little brighter as well as the green tones. Again, we need to be careful to not introduce too much overexposure here, but this is looking great. All right, so we're almost done. Just a little more color grading in the calibration tab where I want to push the blue primary saturation. Perfect. Then let's do some sharpening in the details tab. Here, bring down the radius, increase the details all the way up, adjust the masking slider while holding down the Alt key so we can see where the sharpening will be applied. And now let's bring up the amount of sharpening. That looks super clean. And this is pretty much the image after the Lightroom adjustments. Let's compare to before real quick and you can see that is a huge, huge transformation. Looks much better. Now we can clean up this image a little bit using some Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is right click on the image, go to edit in and choose edit in Photoshop. All right, now let me duplicate that layer by hitting Ctrl J to have a backup. Now there are a few sensor spots up in the sky which I want to get rid of first, therefore I'm using this spot healing brush. And I'm going to just paint over all these little dots. Now we can clean up this image even more by getting rid of these trees in the distance. These are super distracting and I want to get rid of them. I think I'm going to use the clone stamp tool for that. It's a super simple. I'm just going to copy an area from right next to it. And then let's brush this tree away like this. All right, and for that bigger forest on the right side, I'm going to use the lesser tool to create a rough selection. And then let's hit generate the fill and hit generate. All right, this area needs some further adjustments. No problem though, I'm going to use the clone step tool one more time. And that's it. So here we have the finished image. I hope this little Lightroom tutorial on color contrast will be helpful for your next images. If you have any questions or if you want to add anything, as always, feel free to write a comment. Uh, so thank you very much for watching and see you all next time.